let's have fun with our sewing machine, creating a junk journal cover using a candy corn packaging, some random paper scraps and fast flow stitching. Hi there, this is Luise Heinzel. Welcome to an international collaboration that's all about having fun with your sewing machine. This idea of fast flow stitching originally came from Joy Defee. We had another round of this whole thing a while ago, so if you have missed that and if you want to get some more inspiration and some more ideas on how to have fun with your sewing machine, then please check out the playlist. It's linked down below in the description box for you. And since the last round of this challenge was so much fun, I thought perhaps we can do the whole thing again. So I asked the lovely ladies who had participated the last time if they want to do this again. And guess what? They all said yes. And I also could win some new people for this team. So please check out the info box for all the names of the people who are participating. But of course, I will also tell you who that is. So you can find ideas for fast flow stitching on the channels of Joy Defee, of course, Shabby Debbie Duda, Tracy Fox, Artie Maze, Roxy Creations, Shanuki Art, 49 Dragonflies, Helen Colebroke, Gail Agostinelli and Marguerite Miller. Perhaps you've never heard about fast flow stitching, so let me quickly explain what that means. Fast flow stitching is all about having fun with your sewing machine and feeling free with your sewing machine. You can do fast flow stitching on any item like, for example, junk journal tags or journaling cards, covers or belly bands, whatever you can imagine. And fast flow stitching involves sewing in curves. That means you are not sewing in straight lines and very regular, but you are trying to get a little bit more loose. And yeah, it's all about having fun and doing it really fast, especially fast with your sewing machine um, so that you can get really, really interesting results in the end. And it's all about doing something different, being creative and feeling free, of course. To make this challenge even more challenging, <laughs> we've de decided for this round of the Fast Flow Stitching collaboration that we want to add some colors, some special colors to our projects that we are creating within this collaboration. Those colors are orange, red and green. So for this challenge, all of the three colors have to be involved into the project. <laughs> orange, red and green. If you know my channel, you know... <sighs> That's a challenge. I mean, the struggle is real. <laughs> For me, the struggle is real with those colors. But the other day, I not only got a really, really sweet happy mail and sweet, I mean, sweet in a really candy sweet way. <laughs> But I also got a brilliant idea for what I want to try today. And I'm hoping that's an idea for you as well that you would like perhaps to try out. So I've received this candy corn here. I mean, this bag was full of candy corn <laughs> in a really, really cute, happy mail. And I want to thank everyone who has sent candy corn to me. So let me explain why this is so special for me. The other day I've published a video where I made some candy corn birds. The video is also linked down below in the description box if you want to know more about my candy corn birds. I have heard about candy corn on YouTube. It's It was totally a stranger for me. I, I uh, have never had candy corn in my life. But somehow I felt connected to candy corn because candy corn is something that comes from overseas in my eyes from very far away and I have so many people on my channel in my community um, that are coming from overseas and I feel connected to you of course so <laughs> that's weird but because of that I'm feeling connected to candy corn as well. <laughs> 
So I thought, when there's no way to have candy corn in reality, to eat that and to taste it, why not trying to make some candy corn birds <laughs> with the colors of candy corn? And that was the idea behind those birds. And then there were so many nice people who have written some comments below the video and who have offered to send some candy corn to me. And in the meantime, my freezer is full of candy corn. So this is only one of the packages that I have received since the video went online. So I want to thank everyone who has sent this to me from the bottom of my heart. This was so special for me and such a special experience. And I have to admit, I have some pieces of candy corn every day now because it's so good i so like it and i've also bought some peanuts like you have suggested and that's absolutely delicious absolutely gorgeous so um i thought perhaps it's possible to make a candy corn journal and use this for the cover i have no idea if that will work but i want to try this out so this is a relatively sturdy material, I would say. So I'm, that is, it's not possible to destroy that. And this has the right colors. I mean, we have red and we have orange. We only need green to fulfill this color part of this challenge, you know. <laughs> so I have taken out some paper scraps. Um, this is green, as you can see. I will just um, make that a little bit smaller. Uh, I have taken out some that are green and the plan is, and also some others as you can see, and my plan is to make them a little bit smaller and then stuff them into this package and then go over that with my sewing machine to make a really cool cover out of that. So what I have chosen for paper scraps is relatively random as you can see there is uh some packaging paper some paper that i've made with my jelly plate some old book pages this is just um some regular photo paper where i had uh, protected my table let's get rid of this white piece we don't need white um, and this on the paper this is just some oxide ink because i've spritzed some ink to don't know what this was um, and it left this cool um, pattern here and I also have this tiny pieces of I guess this is tissue paper or something like that or feels a little bit like a napkin I guess I have received this in a happy mail as well and this is orange so that is great <laughs> so <laughs> the plan is to open the bag here so it has this kind of closure here so you can just press that and then it is closed here and you can of course open that up again um this opening is relatively small i mean that is i guess to protect you from eating too much of the candy corn because i was wondering if the people overseas have so small hands that they can go in here because when the bag gets more empty, how to reach the candy corn? I mean, the struggle is real. <laughs> so I want to use this opening here to, oh, let's mix that up first, to put in the paper scraps. And I really don't know how much I will need, but I want to have the green paper scraps shown through this um, transparent part of the bag hopefully that will work i mean the challenge doesn't say that the green has to be shown <laughs> in the end <laughs> but of course i don't want to fail this challenge so i want to fill this up to make it on the one hand a little bit more sturdy and on the other hand more interesting and I guess this is also a great way to use up your paper scraps. I want to make this cover a little bit... Um, what is the word in English? S squishy? I, I think Barbara said the word squishy. Is that a word? <laughs> I don't know. 
and I really don't know how much I will need, but I guess I um, can't put too much in here, otherwise I can't go over that with my sewing machine anymore. I have a really good sewing machine, it's the one that I got from my grandma, and it's really good, but I mean... It, it, I think this is, this is absolutely enough. So now how to get that a little bit more regular. Here on the bottom there's nothing. Oh, that feels relatively thick. So I guess I need something that's a little bit longer to bring that around here. Especially here to the, to the edges. Like this, perhaps. Now everything is here on the bottom and here on the top there's nothing. That's not good. Ugh. What am I doing here? Okay, so I've just decided that it's not possible to bring the paper scraps uh, around here relatively regular when we have only this little opening. So I've just decided something. Um... Originally, I wanted to avoid that, but why not opening the package here on the inside very carefully and then um, sew it back together later. And I'm also realizing that we, this way, could turn this um, this thing here into a pocket on the cover later. So let's try something. <laughs> let's open it here as well. So this is a really strange experiment, I would say. Perhaps we can, let's just cut off this. So, um, my idea is to open that completely like this. That's way more easy, Louisa. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. Let's take everything out again. And now we can see that from the inside. That's way better. And now we can um, turn this into a pocket really easily so that we can use it as a pocket later as well. So now I can see how big or actually how wide this is where the opening is from the other side. And now I'm taking just a piece of fabric because I guess that is better than paper to sew it on here. And I'm just eyeballing how big I want to have this pocket so let's just don't make it too big that's like this yep so that we can then sew that on here are you also wondering what she is doing there Let's wait a little second. Perhaps she will realize that this, what she's doing there, is totally stupid. It's so stupid, but perhaps she will realize it by herself. And I guess we have to start here. So on the one edge where this opening uh, ends, fingers crossed. That works better than I thought. Yay. <laughs> And I'm trying to get my sewing a little bit wonky. It's not only the sewing that's wonky, Louisa. I guess it's your brain that's a little bit wonky as well. I mean, what are you doing there? That can't work.
That's totally stupid. Okay, and I guess it's a good idea to go along here as well to make it to make sure that this is attached really well. No. Es ist ja totaler Mumpitz. Bling! Congratulations! And I'm just realizing <laughs> that this is totally weird what I'm doing here. I mean, this fabric, uh, I, I'm, I'm an idiot. This fabric has to go over the whole thing, of course. Otherwise, this is not going to become a pocket. Oh my goodness. Bling! Congratulations. Oh my goodness. Ugh. But that's no problem. That's absolutely no problem. We are going to make a little patchwork. So, um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Of course, this whole thing has to go. I mean, the fabric has to go over the whole opening here. Ugh. This is so hard to imagine how, how that has to be in the end. And now when I, oh my goodness, and when I do it like this. Ah, I, I think I will get problems now. Let's see. Let's just sew it here. I think I will get many problems now, but yeah. Please don't make the same mistakes like I'm making here at the moment. I will show you my try of solving this problem but please please don't do it as stupid as I'm doing it here I will take a sheet of plastic acetate thingy and I will put that into this opening here so that I'm able to use some glue now to glue these both pieces, uh, these both layers of fabric together here and the this acetate helps that um, the fabric doesn't stick to the plastic underneath, I mean to, to the package of the candy corn. So I'm just putting some glue here. Bling! Congratulations! <laughs> Perhaps I should have eaten some of the candy corn before starting this project that uh, I think while I have to wait for this to dry I will take some peanuts mix them with some candy corn eat that <laughs> and perhaps later on this will become successful <laughs> not such a disaster like it is now i'm so sorry so um i'm going to let this dry completely and then there should be a pocket from the outside <sighs> okay <laughs> after some candy corn mixed with peanuts my blood sugar is on a normal level again this is dry and <laughs> we have a pocket here now from the outside of this packaging oh my goodness so we can bring in the scraps again and this way we can also much more easily decide what will be shown here in the end on this transparent part of the package so i will just choose some of the green scraps and place them upside down here so that they can be shown in the end and I'm trying to not move that so much so let's just uh, fill this up with the green scraps 
so that we can fulfill this challenge color wise as well where is this dark green now oh here so this is this is made with my jelly plate and this turned out really cool i would say i love this green scrap so when we have that we can fill up the rest a little bit more randomly i would say Okay, when we have that, we can just close this again. Like this. And now the big challenge is to bring that to the sewing machine Ooh. without moving the scraps. <clears throat> so first of all, I will carefully sew along the bottom here to close that up and then I have to turn it around uh, because I don't want to close my pocket on the front with the, the, with the sewing, of course. I guess we can go along this side as well. Or shall we shall we turn it around first I think I will turn it around so that I have the nice um, sewing on the other side I mean you know the sewing from the left side looks always a little bit strange so this is way way better so I will go around the whole thing first to make sure that it is some kind of a rectangle. And then we can go a little bit crazy here on this other part of the package but I want to go with a straight stitching here so that not everything has the zigzag so that's of course also a cool thing about fast flow stitching you can vary your stitching while you are working on your project and now I will go really fast with my sewing machine I will turn this around and so some crazy curves here.
and you can you can also make some really cool patterns for example those little stars yeah looks like a star by just going back and forth with your sewing machine uh, and moving the package a little bit so i will show that um a little bit slower so that you can imagine what i'm doing so i'm uh sewing a straight stitch like this then i'm uh, taking this little thing where i can just say to my sewing machine that it shall sew backwards so i'm pressing the little button and before i go backwards i'm moving the package a little bit like this then we have this little thing here move the package then sew in the uh, to your uh, towards yourself press the button to sew backwards move the package and when you do that really fast i mean perhaps you can hear that in my voice i'm struggling a little bit at the moment because when you do that fast it's really really easy when you do that slowly it's a little bit difficult so what i'm trying to say is i would like to encourage you to do that really fast because that's the most successful way to get a little star Okay, so now I think since this is plastic and since we are talking about those autumn colors, I mean orange, yellow and green are autumn for me. I'm thinking about stamping to this. I have these leaf stamps by Tim Holtz and I think these are perfect for this project. Since the cover is plastic, um, I'm using Stazon Jet Black ink so that this whole thing can't smear and that it, um, yeah, that it can dry, especially because of that. So let's first take this one. Oh my goodness. Hopefully that will work. Oh! What do you think? That's not so bad. Let's take another one. That looks really cool. It's okay for me when it's a little bit loose. But let's see. What else do we have here? This one? like this okay so what about some splatters with white paint I mean this is plastic so white acrylic paint should stay on this material so why not trying that as a yeah, little contrast. So this is just some white gesso mixed with water. I mean, gesso and acrylic paint, I would say it's nearly the same when it comes to using that on a surface like plastic. That looks cool.
Okay. Oh, I think it's time for another portion of candy corn because now I have to let this dry and I think that will take forever. But we will see if that will work or if this will come off. But I think I think it will be successful. Okay, it's a while later and the smaller drops are dry. Also the stays on ink doesn't come off but the bigger splatters here are still wet and I can't wait I can't wait so I'm taking a dry paper towel and just placing this on top perhaps we can get some cool effects from the white gesso this way as well I want to spread that out a little bit there where it's a little bit thicker oh yes look at that aha that's totally great <clears throat> That's totally great. Sometimes it can be a really good idea to be not so patient <laughs> and just go over a project with a paper towel because now, look, can you see that? These little frames come because it has already dried a little bit and in the middle it's like a little fog of gesso and also this what has come around here a little bit it looks really interesting and while that was drying i have just made three signatures for this little journal this is just some paper that i have dyed with some watercolors so this is a turquoise -ish green greenish turquoise <laughs> i don't know how to say that and some coffee dyed paper I've made three signatures. Each signature has five papers so <clears throat> that I, I mean, fold it in half, of course, so that I can put that in here now, like this. Now it's relatively thin, but when I fill that up, I think it can grow a little bit. So that's good. Let's make it not too fat in the beginning. And then I will sew the signatures in with a three hole pamphlet stitch so this is my finished little journal i'm really happy with it it looks so cute and it's ready to be filled up with something i'm not totally sure what i will do with this but i really enjoyed this loose process i mean this was a project with yeah totally not thinking i mean the thing with the pocket here Perhaps it would have been better to think about that first, <laughs> this little accident. But I love how it turned out and how we have solved this problem. So now we can open this here and we have this little pocket where we can put something in and then we can close it here. I really like the color combination of this turquoise and green pages with the orange. I think this um, color palette of the challenge really helped me to come out of my comfort zone because normally I think that I wouldn't combine this greenish and turquoise colors with this orange and yellow so that helped a lot to come out of my normal color palette comfort zone if that is a word so this is the back and also the scraps that are shown here look really cool in my eyes this green gives a totally different look to the whole uh, cover i would say i mean this is now a junk journal cover and not a candy corn package anymore of course <laughs> but, but this green and this orange works really really well together i love how the stamping came out on this material really cool experience as well and with such a project you can also learn how different mediums work on different surfaces so here of course i want to wanted to save this package as a memory of receiving the candy corn but when you use a normal candy package that is not so important for you i mean a candy package that would go to the trash can then you could, of course, try out different mediums and different techniques to see if it would work on such a plastic surface. And that's also, I think, a cool um, aspect of such a project. 
I've made uh, the spine here like this so that you can see the thread here of the binding. Normally I don't like when this is shown, but in this case I think I want to live with that because here it says candy corn, here it says corn, and when I glue something over this, or yeah, gluing is actually relatively uh, difficult on such a surface, but if I would perhaps put something on top, I could, I mean, I could easily open the journal and sew along here and here while I have attached something here so that this would be covered up. That would be absolutely no problem. I have often done that with soft covers, um, put something here and then just sew along here and here, but then the words will not be shown anymore. Uh, and because of that, I will live with the fact that this spine is not a hidden spine. I'm not totally sure for what I want to use this journal, but uh, I guess you will see that in the future somehow in my videos. I hope you liked this little project. Um, I wish you very much fun to try something like this by yourself. And please don't forget to check out the other channels and the other videos of this Fast Flow Stitching project. The link to the playlist with all of the videos is down below in the description box. So please check that out and have a very great day. Stay creative. See you.